Well, hello, fifth grade. Today we are going to move on to week three of our project based learning. So remember, we are building a virtual Rube Goldberg machine, and last week we did stage one of that virtual machine. Today we are going to do stage two, and the goal is to connect stage one and stage two. So that way we can kind of see both stages working together. So let's dive in and see what we can do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get into Scratch and we're going to open up our project from before. And when you do that, the goal here is to make a copy of your past project. So you're going to find it in the My Stuff folder. Just click on the project. And we're going to click see inside. And we're going to go to file, save as a copy. And a copy is now saved. You can see it adds the word copy here. So I'm going to change it from stage one to stage two. And it'll still work. It'll still do all the same stuff. So what I'm going to use next is something called broadcast and this allows me to send information and messages and I'm going to use a broadcast that says stage two that lets every sprite and everything in the program know that we are ready to start stage two. So after I have finished stage one, I'm going to just tack that right onto the bottom of the code and say broadcast stage two. So we have this other command here that says when I receive a message. So I'm going to go into that block and put that on my spinning sprite here and say when I receive the message that it's stage two, I'm going to hide this sprite. Now, when I hide a sprite, I always have to make sure I pair it up with a show. So I'm going to make sure when I hit the green flag, it shows this sprite. And when I receive stage two, it hides it. So let's see what happens. Oh, and you can see it disappears. So now let's deal with the ball because it's clearly on the wrong side of the screen and has to kind of be flying in from the other side. So again, I'm going to go in and I'm going to hide the ball right after I broadcast stage two. And then I'm going to move the ball. So to do that, first, I'm going to drag the ball to where I want it to. Sometimes it kind of bounces off the edge there, so I got to drag it a little bit at a time little bit by little bit. And then Scratch will automatically record that location. So when I drag in the go to XY block, it will have that location saved for me. Now I'm going to go to the looks and hit show. So when I run it, it's going to look like the ball has magically moved from one side to the other. Okay, so now we're ready to start stage two. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'll move out of the way so you can see it, is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint a new sprite so I can draw in something. I'm gonna do a spiral, so give me a minute here to draw this. And I've also added some code now for my ball to move through the loop. So I've also put in a variable called loop speed that allows me to change how fast the ball is moving through the loop rather than retyping all the numbers. By setting the variable loop speed to 0.1, I can then change how fast this ball moves to that loop. And I just did that using by moving the ball and then putting in the glide to position block and then moving the ball and putting the glide to position block. And I want to make sure that when the green flag is clicked, this sprite is hidden. And when stage two happens, this sprite shows up. And you can see now it looks like the ball is flying in, hitting the ramp, and then flying off. I will put these code snips inside of Google for you so that way you have access to those code snips and you don't have to pull it off the video. 
The goal is for you to create that animation and have that transition happen between stage one and stage two. I think you're going to have some fun with it. I'll see you next time.